Okay, so in this video, I want to investigate what it means to differentiate an, uh, an inverse function by effectively being asked, well, what is the gradient of the inverse of a function at a particular point? Can we do this relatively easily? So I'm going to go through a couple of questions here, a couple of examples to really show you what's going on and how to do it. So for number one, given that f of x is equal to x squared plus 1, where x is greater than or equal to 0, find the gradient of the inverse function of f at the point 5, 2. OK, so let's have a look at this one first. Now, we might be thinking, well, OK, well, the method through would be to find the inverse function and then find uh, dy by dx and then substitute in x equals 5. OK, so let's go about that. Now, um, first of all, we'd write y is equal to x squared plus 1, OK? And then you swap the x's and y's, OK? Then I want to rearrange this to get y equals. So subtract 1 from both sides and then square root. And it'll be the positive square root of x minus 1 um, because x is greater than or equal to 0 here. OK, so um, so in other words, what this curve looks like, it will be the that looks like this and then the this one will look like that. OK, so it's just the positive part of it. Um, so let, let's uh, do a little graph visually. OK, let's see what's going on. Remember, we've got the uh, y equals x as the reflecting line. We've got the x squared plus 1. So there's f of x, and g of x will look something like this. Uh, sorry, not g of x, the inverse function of f. Okay. So I'm being asked, what is the gradient of the inverse function at 5, 2? So 5, 2 is going to be somewhere over here, right? So it's going to have some kind of positive, positive gradient. OK, so I've got to differentiate this. So I want to find the derivative, the d by dx, of f inverse of x. So of this x minus 1 to the half. OK, and so the half would come down the front and then I would take one off the power. Derivative of what's inside is just one. That doesn't really make any difference. So then I want to substitute in the uh, five. OK, and that will get me the gradient of the tangent to the curve at that point. So um, the derivative, so evaluated at x equals five would be 1 half of 5 take away 1 to the minus a half. Now, 5 take away 1 is 4. 4 to the half is 2, so that'd be 1 over 2 times 1 over 2, so that's a quarter. So 1 quarter is the gradient of that tangent line. Now, what I really want to know is, is there any connection between the gradient of the curve at 5, 2 and the gradient of y equals f of x at the corresponding point of 2, 5, the reflected point in the line y equals x. Let's see. So what I'd need to do is I'd need to find f prime, which is 2x. And then I substitute in the x value of 2, and I get 4. So clearly, it does seem to be some kind of connection here. OK? And in general, it is true that the gradient of the inverse function at a coordinate AB is equal to 1 over the gradient of the original function at BA. OK, so in other words, the gradient of that line there is 1 over that one, and vice versa. So this is something we just need to remember moving forward, OK? 
And that is what's going to aid me here. This is how they're connected, this form one quarter. Because if we look at problem number two, when I look at problem number two, I've got a situation where I've got this g of x equals x squared x minus 2. And I want to find the gradient of the inverse function of g at the point 9, 3. Now, there is no way of finding an algebraic inverse function for g. There's no way that I can put y equals that, swap the x's and y's, and then get that in terms of y equals some function of x. There's just no way of doing it. So I can now use this method to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to find g prime of x, the first derivative of this, using the product rule. So x squared times the derivative of x minus 2 plus x minus 2 times the derivative of 2x. So tidying that up, that's x squared plus 2x lots of x minus 2. OK, um, I can multiply that out. x squared plus 2x squared, so that's 3x squared minus 4x. OK, so that's g prime. So if I work out what that is equal to um, when x is equal to 3, because I want to find the gradient of g inverse, at the point 9, 3, this will be 1 over the gradient of f of x at 3, 9. So I substitute in 3. 3 lots of 3 squared take away 4 lots of 3. So 27 take away 12, so 15, means that the gradient of the inverse function of g at 9, 3 will be equal to 1 over 15. The gradient, 1 over the gradient of g at 3, 9. OK? So that's how I can now solve this problem easily. And I could have done the same easily with number 1 as well, as I showed. But now I can find the gradient of an inverse function without actually being able to find the inverse function. OK? Um, and it's this formula, effectively, that will get you there.